Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri. Today we're going to cover the sigmoidal function. It is commonly used in neural networks for the activation function between layers. It can also be used as an activation function to the output layer. But we're going to dive on in and cover three separate parts. The first part is just going to be the derivative of the sigmoid function. The second part is going to be the conversion of that derivative into the form that is commonly seen in neural networks and machine learning. And then the third part is going to cover um, exactly why we need the second form and why we're not just using the plain derivative. Um, each part of this video is going to be in different color ink, so you can actually jump to different parts if you're curious. I'll also put links in the description below so that you can actually just jump to the section that you want to jump to uh, if you don't want to watch the entire video. So let's dive on in. So first off, the sigmoid function is 1 over 1 plus e to the negative x. And there's going to be two important parts here that we need to review quickly. Uh, first is the quotient rule. So the quotient rule states that the derivative of a function with respects to x is equal to the denominator times the derivative of the numerator with respects to x minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator with respects to x all divided by the denominator squared. So we need the quotient rule to take the derivative of the sigmoidal function, but we're going to jump into the second piece here, which we need, which is the chain rule. Uh, and just as a quick reminder, the chain rule is a function of a to the x, um, which is the derivative of this function with respects to x, is equal to the derivative of this function f with respects to a times the derivative of a with respects to x. Um, and the denominator of the sigmoid function will use the chain rule. And here we're going to take the derivative of 1 plus e to the negative x, which is the denominator, uh, with respects to x, which is equal to negative e to the negative x. Um, you can do the math. It's pretty simple to do. You can also just Google this if you don't believe me, as this is a really common derivative to take. And so now we're going to use the quotient rule here. And we're going to remember that the derivative of the denominator of this function is negative e to the negative x. And we're just going to plug this in as we go. So now we're going to use the quotient rule to take the derivative of the sigmoidal function with respects to x. And this is going to give you 1 plus e to the negative x times 0 minus 1 times negative e to the negative x, which is the derivative of the denominator which we took earlier. And then this entire thing is going to be divided by the denominator squared, which is going to be 1 plus e to the negative x squared. So simplifying the equation uh, we, by conducting the multiplication in the numerator, and if you do uh, 1 plus e to the negative x times 0, you get 0. So that disappears. And then the right-hand side of this numerator is negative 1 times negative e to the negative x. So those negatives will be multiplied and create a positive here. And so we'll end up with the derivative of the sigmoidal function with respects to x is equal to e to the negative x divided by 1 plus e to the negative x squared. Okay, so this is the final solution here. Uh, the final solution is e to the negative x divided by 1 plus e to the negative x squared. But now we need to actually convert this into a more user-friendly format, and I'll cover that in the third section. But let's just dive on in here and simplify or adjust this derivative. So remember here that the sigmoidal function is 1 over 1 plus e to the negative x. Uh, the derivative here is going to be e to the negative x divided by 1 plus e to the negative x squared. And now we're going to adjust that. To adjust that, we're just going to add and subtract 1 to the numerator. Um, so this doesn't actually change the value of the function. So we're going to end up with 1 minus 1 plus e to the negative x divided by 1 plus e to the negative x squared. Uh, and then next, we're going to actually split the equation into two parts. And the first part is going to be 1 plus e to the negative x divided by 1 plus e to the negative x squared, and then minus 1 over 1 plus e to the negative x squared. And you can see here, this is simply the top piece. We've just broken this into two parts. Um, next, we're going to cancel the e to the negative x uh, from the numerator and the denominator in the first fraction here. And so the top cancels out, and this just gives us 1. Uh, the denominator, which was 1 plus e to the negative x, uh, was squared. One of those cancels out since we took it from the numerator and the denominator, which would be equal to 1. And that just gives us 1 over 1 plus e to the negative x uh, minus the second half, which we have not changed, which is 1 over 1 plus e to the negative x squared. Now we're just going to factor out 1 over 1 plus e to the x from both sides. 
um, you end up with one over one plus e to the negative x times one minus one over one plus e to the negative x. Uh, if you remember from like high school, the FOIL method, uh, you take the one over one plus e to the negative x, you multiply it by one, and then you multiply that by the second half, which is one over one plus e to the negative x, and you can see that um, the simplification actually works, and it gives you the same fractions and the same equation that we had before. Okay, so now this looks quite messy here, this one over one plus e to the negative x times one minus one over one plus e to the negative x, but that's okay. Because if you remember, uh, the sigmoidal function itself, s of x, is equal to 1 over 1 plus e to the negative x. So we're actually going to substitute um, s of x in place of 1 over 1 plus e to the negative x. And we'll end up with the final equation here, which is the derivative of the sigmoidal function with respect to x is equal to s of x times 1 minus s of x. Okay, so now for this third part here. The question is, is, why are we using s of x times one minus s of x instead of the original derivative? The reason for doing this is that uh, s of x is actually already calculated um, in another step when you actually implement neural networks in a computer science or like a programming framework here. And since we've already calculated s of x, you can just take s of x times one minus s of x and the computer doesn't have to do any more calculations. If you were to actually use um, the derivative itself, which is e to the negative x over one plus e to the negative x squared, the computer just has to do more calculations to get essentially the same answer that we would have gotten if we would have just used the s of x times one minus s of x. And so realistically, you can use either one, but it's preferred to use the second method here because it's simplified and the calculations are already done by the computer. Um, this makes a lot of sense. So if you look here at like a neural net, every one of these nodes in layer one, every one of these nodes in layer two, and the final output, if you're using a sigmoidal function, you would have to calculate this derivative when you do the back propagation portion. And so you'd have to do this over and over and over again. And depending how many epochs or epochs, depending how you pronounce this, uh, depending how many essentially uh, repetitions you have to do when you go backwards to do the gradient descent, uh, determines how many times this calculation has to be done. So if you could just save this into the computer, the S of X, which we already calculate, it actually speeds up the process quite a bit. And you might be thinking, oh, Dimitri, this makes no sense. This is dumb what you're saving a few seconds. But now if you're going to be using um, a large neural network or it takes a lot of repetition or epochs or epochs to get to the final solution here, it'll actually save you quite a bit of time. Uh, this just starts with basic neural networks. If you start getting into more complex neural networks, uh, there's more iterations, more loops, uh, and this will actually end up saving you quite a bit of time in the long run. So that's the derivation of the sigmoid function. Um, it's the simplification to the format you typically see in neural networks and machine learning. And finally, exactly why we use the simplified version over the standard derivative. Anyways, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, until next time.